I wasn't tired, then I would talk with care. I would make my words eloquently cascade across the air. But my shoulders are heavy, hands are rugged, and mind is bare. So I hope it doesn't alarm you if I give you what's in here. Because I want to change a neighborhood that doesn't care about the greater good. I want to affect sisters my age to break their chain to ankle and foot. I want black boys who look like me to be able to grace TV without the title RIP or a jumpsuit and a jury. But folks, I'm tired. Because 16 days ago, bullets struck a five month old on my best friend's street. So how could I stay inspired? The same street my goddaughter stays on. And last month, Four kids under 15 were all shot in Cleveland. Man, I wish I was a liar. Wish I could see hope. Wish my homies cared about their souls. Wish these kids had dreams to chase just as far as their hearts could go. Wish revival sparked a peace in our hearts with a vibrant hope. But every time I try, the brothers who need it tell me to go. But I won't quit until they stop. Till my age range demographic and my skin color realizes the purpose in life they got. Till dads come home and moms step up and kids change. This is a ministry my people need to see because right now the cycle won't stop. Right now the gangs and guns and drugs are running like circus tops. Right now the hate and pain and shame is chaining with rusted locks. I know it's the system but we won't change because nobody stops. How can we find peace when we're cool with the pain we got? How can black lives matter if black lives don't matter to black lives and our brothers have black eyes and our sisters have black sides and a neighbor full of violence and black cries where anybody that tries to help ends up cut up by black knives. Last month, four Cleveland kids were all shot by black nines. And I'm praying that change is near because we're losing our black minds and in inner city hearts, low economic souls and broken hands. Boy, I'm standing on this stage on behalf of the working class, abandoned like blockbusters and struggling for a chance. St. Clair, we need a hope from on high to renew our plans. What if we had fresh inspiration, a peace that we could bring across the nation and a change of mindset that produces patience. And I know that this poem might be closing some doors because everybody has an opinion and is so offended at yours. But I don't care anymore because this talk is my promise that if I get on bigger stages, then at least I'll be honest. So people, this is more than art. This is hope for change. This is a tired man's actions before he goes insane. This is a project that I have that was generated through pain. This is a talk that somebody from Cleveland's east side has to say. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, um, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, God bless y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I had a talk that had a bunch of jokes in it. But to be honest with you, the more that I saw the news reports coming out of my neighborhood, the more it changed how and what I have to say to y'all. So y'all get the ghetto, Chris. <laughs> um, truth is, I don't do art without trying to change people's minds. I guess I get that from spoken word and ministry. But coming up here in Cleveland, there is a major mind change that needs to occur. And I think I'm tailor-made to be one of the cats to help make that happen. I was blessed to go to the Cleveland School of the Arts, then graduate and be able to go to the California Institute of the Arts in Valencia, California, then even spend some time at the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama in Scotland. And I want to take everything that I learned back to the hood that I come from. I have a lot of ideas, but in lieu of time, I'll just talk about one. It's called If These Walls Could Talk. Now, a lie that used to be in my head was that nobody could ever make it from my neighborhood. I look around and I see nothing but abandoned buildings and dirty lots, and I think that nothing good has ever come from these places. But it wasn't until I left and started to research my town that I realized that that just wasn't true. I had no idea that the ground that I stood on birthed some of the greatest thinkers, leaders, and world changes that this past century has seen, and that the stores, buildings, and homes that were abandoned that I walked past every day were once the places that they had their dreams inside of. So I thought, what if this current identity of abandonment came face to face with this legacy of greatness for everybody in my neighborhood to see? 
That's what if these walls could talk is. I'm finding a row of abandoned homes and I'm closing down that street. I'm putting chairs in the middle of that street, facing that row of abandoned homes. And it's called if these walls could talk. And that's exactly what those homes are going to do. I'm going to make those homes wake up and tell their stories of the neighborhood to the neighborhood. I got some friends who work in Marvel, Adult Swim, and Disney. And as we speak, people are making animated versions of that row of homes. And uh, we're going to have them talk in an interactive documentary. Once we get outside, we're setting up screens and we're projecting those animated houses in front of those actual houses, and they're going to speak. So why am I doing this? One, a lot of times when I would see faces that look like mine and stories about my neighborhood, it would always be stories that were bad, but I wonder what it would do to these kids to see faces from their neighborhood that inspire them. Two, people are getting really used to poems and rallies, so sometimes it takes a creative, unique, and imaginative approach to hit people in a different way. And three, these houses, they give me an opportunity to talk about more than just history. What's their perspective on fatherlessness? What do they think about the state of the neighborhood now? Those homes could be my new way of delivering the messages that I speak in poems. They could have a perspective on the violence and the murders that occur like right in front of their street. I think the problems have always been in, uh, the same, but I think that the tactics that we use in talking about these problems, those could be upgraded. I think that the allure of art, the approach of a poetic mind, and the creative solutions to community problems could begin to change the way that these kids think and hopefully could throw a monkey wrench in the middle of this system that's made me sick for way too long. Thank you.